For this lesson, we're going to focus on how to take input from our keyboard, per se, and then we're going to apply a movement through that input to a geome entity. So it's just going to allow you to understand how input can affect the positioning of an entity to create any type of uh, game that maybe would be a spaceship. And this is just in a primitive sense. and would be a first building block to understanding how to move something through what you want it to do based on WASD, for instance. So the first thing that we need to do is I need to create a flow graph entity to house my logic. With snapping on, I'm going to double click and then add it to the center. We're going to right click and create a flow graph and we'll call this one move logic underscore FG. So now I have all my logic within this and what I'm going to do next is I'm going to choose a geom entity which is right down here and we're going to go to assets objects and I'm going to select a primitive sphere and double click that. So this is going to be my move MSH, so move mesh. The other thing that I'm going to do is actually, I'm, before I change the movement, I'm going to create a camera so we're able to actually have a view that'll start. So I'm going to bring this down. And we want to go back to miscellaneous camera, we're going to add that to the scene. You choose control and shift to snap it. Using one to move and we'll call this one main underscore cam. So inside of flow graph what I want to do is let's select the camera first and we're going to do Q entity ID and we're going to assign the camera entity to that. We will duplicate this as well because I don't want to go back and forth. And we're going to grab the main object and we'll apply that to this one. So now I have both of my entities. And what I want to do is I want to actually understand where my main move mesh is. In order to do that, I can get the position. So let's go ahead and press Q and we'll type in entity position, but that's not actually the get one, so we want to come down to get position. This is the one we want. So if I go to Q time time, and I feed in my move mesh to this, I can say I want to get it every tick. So if I were to turn on the debugging, you would see that it's getting over and over really fast. We'll turn off the debugging. And what we want to do is we want to move the entity. So obviously we would go to movement. Let's go over to the components now. Do this a little different. And we'll do move entity to. And we can say that we want to move the mesh to a position. But obviously, if I were to turn this on, it would just say, yeah, it's, the mesh is exactly where it was. So what we can do now is let's tweak a few things. We're going to set this to world so it corresponds to where the position is. We're not going to get fancy. We can set our speed to maybe like 50. And then what we want to do is instead of typing in a destination, we want to add to this. So let's do Q add vec, and we're going to choose a vector addition. So it doesn't go out of frame. What I'm going to do is just take this position in A, and we're going to add in B on the Z. So we'll make that 1, as simple as that. And then we'll add that to the destination. So let's open this up just a little bit. So now I have my position and I can add it, but there's no actual way to influence this. And that's where we'll do Q, input key. And since I have WASD already working, I'm going to choose uh, J, K, and L. And in this case, I'm going to choose J. We're not going to set up all the keys. 
but you'll get an idea of how it works. So in this, we want to make sure that we start it based on this, and then we stop it on the release. So if we go ahead and go back, now that we're playing, what happens if we press the J key? Now we notice that our object moves, and once released, it stops. So it's simple, it's exactly what we wanted. But maybe on the finish, you wanted to start again, because we don't want to query it twice, so you could add a logic any to be able to say on the finish, we also may want to go back and press it again, so that it repeats properly, and there's less stutter. So now in this reality, we've been able to create an object that if we turn it off and turn it on and press J, we're able to go to a position. And likewise, you could do this in all the other cases. Now what I want to do is I want to take this and we want to move it exactly where this object is. So now we can get the position of the camera just like this before. And we want to just completely do the same concept right here. So the position that we're going to feed in on A is going to take the Y and we'll make this 0. And on the Y, let's do minus 5. So this is where the main camera will come into play. And we want to choose that entity when we want to set that position. And to start out with this one, we'll just do the start so we can briefly test it and move onward. So if we were to press play on this, you would notice the camera actually moves back. So we already have a mechanic where we are moving the ball up, but also we want to make sure that it's constrained to that so it gets the position and it stays in that position. So with that, we can switch this over and we can do it every single time to update. So now you notice that since we're doing it in the tick on the start, we had it where it aligned for testing and on the input, but we update it every single time so the camera will automatically go with it. The last thing that we need to do is basically add a view. So we'll go to Q, View, and we'll add the camera. And now on Start, we'll just simply say that we want to enable the view. So going into here, let's go ahead and jump in this time. So if I press Control G, you'll notice that I am now on this. So if I press J, I move up as said. Obviously, it's pretty high, we're moving very, very fast, but the same kind of input could be replicated across J, K, L, and I, so then you can move around an X and a Y axis without actually considering depth in the case of this sphere. So this was a quick breakdown on how exactly you would be able to use input and drive a camera view through a very, very simple flow graph. So you would just duplicate this over and over again and change the axis however it would respect in the x, y, and z. So in this, we basically gave the basic components to have a simple, possibly a top-down game, or a side-scroller for that matter, built in a foundation of just a camera view, an input, and moving an object. So think about what you can do in the future and how we can expand this in other roles and add different foundations or mechanics to make the game that you want to.